Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about stretching chest voice and some of the ways that that works and some of the ways that it doesn't work. It's a rather extreme type of thing. It's not always going to be uh, everybody's healthiest favorite thing to do. And I'll talk more about that information here soon. But if you want to join me and, uh, and hear about this and learn some more about it, we're going to talk about it. So join me. Right, so I'm going to start off by talking about a couple different things so that I can help solidify my position here. And I know that most of the YouTube comments will be like, the lesson starts in five minutes or whatever people do. But anyway, so the other day I was looking uh, up my name on Google because uh, I was trying to find one of my own videos from another channel I have. And I saw accidentally a Reddit uh, thing where people were talking about me on a forum do these guys, like, you know, they were talking about Chris Lipe and they're talking about me. Do they know what the fuck they're talking about and should I listen to them and things of that nature? And uh, and then people were always, it's the internet, so people were like, fucking this guy and fuck that guy and this guy knows what he's talking about, but that guy. And I want to explain something about the nature of what I'm doing here and the nature of, of teaching uh, the voice. So first of all, I've been teaching for 12 years. I have taught alongside people that were college trained. Some of those people then ended up coming to me for lessons. I am somebody that's never had a vocal lesson, not one. I've wanted to, but there are plenty of times where I couldn't afford it, so I just didn't do that. And the problem was is that most of the people that I maybe even considered learning from were either too expensive or they just didn't really sound the way that I wanted to sound. They didn't really have something that's a big part of this listening to the person kind of do the things that you wish you could do or you want to try to do or you can get close to or whatever and then you know wanting to be taught from that person or listen to their information you'll find a lot of vocal teachers that give a lot of information but then you don't really hear them sing that much so it's kind of like eh. so uh for the f reddit forum people and uh, stuff like that Everything I'm doing and everything that I've learned has been from drive and ambition and basically borderline obsessive compulsive uh, behavior where similar to guitar and stuff, people sitting around playing an instrument for four hours a day is kind of getting into a mental sickness, if you want to be honest about it. Um, feeling this, this draw to do something every day and this compulsion to learn about it um, for not really any reward or maybe some grandiose reward. You can see where I'm going with this. Point being, anyway, um, not that many people are really that well-versed when it comes to rock singing, mixed voice, and these type of, we'll say extreme even though they're not, some of them are, some of them aren't, but not that many people are that well-versed in teaching this stuff. So you can go to somebody that's classically trained in opera and classical music, musical theater and things like that, but that still doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to learn the right information that's really going to help you to do the right things. Now, having said that, I'm performing almost all the time now. And when I perform, if you don't know, if you're in a smaller band or a cover band or something like that, typically you're asked to play for three to four hours. So the stuff that I'm teaching has to be some version of legit because I have to sing for three hours straight. Sometimes there's breaks, but then again, too, sometimes it's four hours. If I'm doing something unhealthy, give it 25 minutes and just everything's going to go downhill. But um, I'm testing this stuff consistently and constantly to make sure I'm able to do it right and to make sure I'm able to do it and have a voice later, have a voice the next day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so don't be afraid of different terms and afraid of different things. Part of this entire journey is experimentation and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. You're definitely going to go down rabbit holes. I've been very lucky that I haven't. Uh, really had much problems with this, but you're definitely going to go down rabbit holes where you do certain things and then you instantly are like, nope, that doesn't feel right. When something hurts, when something's starting to kind of blow your voice out and you're starting to get like that, you'll notice that your head voice and chord closure in your head voice starts to go first, your falsetto starts to dive, your bridge starts to expand, meaning the gap between your chest and your head starts to become even bigger. You'll notice things like that. So those things are all bad. And I consistently and constantly am preaching specific things on a physical level, which I'm going to get into here as we talk about this, where if your neck and tension, things like this are growing, um, 
and, and you're, you're doing things wrong. It's just wrong. Meaning, once again, hopefully you can learn to trust some of this information. Take what you will from it. Some things you're going to get from certain videos and certain people. You're going to like certain styles from some people, et cetera, et cetera. I literally just had an email before this, this lesson I'm making right now, from somebody that went to college for singing. And now they're reaching out to me. That's hilarious and ironic, but it's great. Uh, I'm glad that I can I pr provide information like this. A lot of times when people are taught classically, they're taught very, very much inside of a box and all that stuff gets them inside of a box and they don't know how to get the fuck out of it. So then there's a goober like me that can be like, I got this. So having said that, we're going to talk about stretching chest voice. Now, as I mentioned, this is one of the more extreme things that if you don't have a lot of other information, for God's sakes, this is not going to be your favorite thing to be doing or something that's probably going to come very easily. I'm going to use a lot of terminology. I'm going to lose a lot of, use a lot of explanations and a lot of things that maybe you should have preliminarily done before you kind of got here. But it's something I've been doing a lot lately because I have to record these cover song things and some of them are really uh, difficult. So... Um, first of all, what do I mean by stretching chest voice? Of course, I mean taking your chest voice basically up to the bridge and then being able to stretch it over that bridge uh, quite a considerable amount and maintain that chest quality, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, with all of this stuff in terms, uh, in terms of singing, you're learning how to acclimate to pressure. You're learning how to utilize different musculature to uh, attenuate, if that's the right word, to uh, take care of that pressure. If you start imagining this air pressure that you're building and utilizing, similar to like water or even Play-Doh, if I can go that far back and date myself, um, you're going to be making different shapes and different things are going to be pushing against different things. And then you have to learn how to utilize that or to not. So um, as we're doing this, we're going to be going in the more extreme version of building a lot of pressure, holding back a lot of air and pressure, and then being able to kind of stretch and uh, mold things around that pressure. Does that make sense? So first of all, um, we have chest voice. Chest voice comes up to, for me as a baritone, it comes up to F sharp four, which is right about here, meaning perfectly for how, however many years now, my bridge has been perfectly right there. So people that are teaching you, um, you know, that after a bunch of years, you might be able to get up a couple notes higher and stuff. You're probably going to be utilizing the same things that I'm trying to teach you to employ here. But uh, my bridge has not changed at all in the past, like, 15 years. So don't, <laughs> if, you're, if you're like, the next five years, man, I'm going to be able to hit that second note above it. That's ridiculous. So um, anyway, um, chest voice moving up to your bridge, your passaggio, ah, where your voice wants to flip. Then we're moving into falsetto or head voice. Difference between the two, falsetto is broken apart <sighs> with extra air. Head voice is the same coordination, <sighs> but your chords are together, so we have chord closure. When we're doing something like this, there should be no, absolutely no version of anything that you're doing where your vocal cords are breaking apart. You can use falsetto, that's not what I mean. I mean that you're not perpetuating any type of distortion, anything where your chords are a little bit open. Get to know listening to yourself, if you hear a little bit of a uh, leaking through, you're leaking air, and you're going to be fucked. It's going to dry out your cords. It's going to be bad. It's always bad. It's not good. So keep that in mind as we're doing this too. Now, um, as we get into stretching chest or, or the idea of stretching chest, there's a couple things I want to mention about mixed voice. Everybody wants to learn mixed voice, blah, 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 blah. I understand that. And it's confusing, and I understand that, you know, certain people are going to get certain things and certain people aren't. Um, I could go on fucking talking about mixed voice, but let me explain a couple different things about it that might help you on your path to this whole idea that we're going to get into. Some of these ideas, if you haven't already learned them, lower larynx, crying into the sound, nasality, things like that, are going to instill themselves into stretching chest. Um, I recently sang a song uh, for this cover thing, the song Mother by Danzig. That fucking dude, uh, Danzig, is pushing his chest up to uh, a B4. My bridge ends here. That's super high. He's distorting, belting out of his fucking head. It's incredible. It sounds terrific. I don't know how long. I don't know if he can still do it. I don't know how long he was doing it, but he sounded great live. Probably still does. Anyway, the point being... 
Um, having to sing something like that as a baritone going way up there and try to keep that chest quality is very, very difficult. Either way, there is still, even if they're masked and you can't hear them very well, he's still employing a little bit of a cry sound, maybe a little bit of nasality, maybe a little bit of lower larynx. What that means is that if you haven't tried any of these things, for example, low larynx, oh, right there I was able to glide over my bridge by keeping my larynx down by yawning into the sound. Nasality, uh, right there I was able to glide over my bridge because I was pushing and utilizing more nasal quality and letting the resonance move. Point being again, some of these things are going to be kicking in, so it's not just straight up, I learned how to stretch chest. Some of those things are still going to be working their way in. If you go backwards and you learn some of those things and, and figure out how to use those, you're going to be better off every single time. Now, in terms of stretching chest, um, and I should give a couple mixed exercises in here too, but in terms of stretching chest, we have two different main resonator spaces in our head. So we have this down here, which is what you're typically using to speak, this cavernous spherical place in our head, right? Ah, uh, if you give me a nice ah uh, type of thing, or if you're able to support from the diaphragm, ah, uh, and give me a nice kind of big ah, uh, operatic type of thing, you're going to feel this spherical kind of space gets filled up with sound. And the sonic sound in there is going to be bouncing around, making this nice round kind of uh, almost like standing in the middle of a round room. My students know that I talk about this stuff all the time. You're going to feel a really nice singing quality. Uh, strangely enough, you have another resonator similar to that above. So if I go behind that soft palate where the opening is in the back that leads me up to my sinuses, I have another resonator. Not quite the same size, but all of this, the sinus, ca sinus cavity, all that kind of stuff can be similar to the size of almost a baseball. So we have a big resonator up here as well. So you have those two different spaces. You can learn how to utilize, you know, both of them and split the difference. Uh, or just, <laughs> just try to go to one. But uh, in chest voice and stretching chest voice beyond your bridge, we're trying to keep that fucking resonance down here as much as we can. Even if we're beyond our bridge, we're trying to have as much chest resonance in there as we can. Now we know with mixed voice, or maybe you don't know, that you are able to continuously open that valve back up and try to keep yourself down here, which is also a part of this. But that would sound like this. If I go through, let's say a siren like this, we'll go up to this B4 like I was talking about with dancing. So remember, my bridge is down here at F sharp four, so we have to get way up here. That means on a resonator level or a, a thermometer in the body level that my resonance is now up here, uh, meaning I'm up here. If I want that to sound chesty, I gotta figure out on a muscular level how to pull that shit back down. So first I can let it go where it wants to go. Uh, that's B4. Uh, sounds more head voicey, right? Uh, now if I change that vowel to something more like an A, and I try to hang on to that A. Uh, we see that I have more chest resonance. In a sense, I've already started to kind of stretch chest. Now, if I go into an O and I really try to open that vowel, meaning I'm trying to keep the resonance down here. Does that make sense? Oh, that sounded a lot more like chest, right? Now let's add one more part of this, and then I'm going to try to give some exercises so that we can try to explain this. I think I'm also going to take this over to Patreon and start applying it to songs so that people can, you know, try to follow along with me. God knows if I put a song up on here, YouTube gets pissed off because, you know, I use somebody's song and then you can't, you can't monetize. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully that made a difference. Part of it is realizing where your resonance is. Is the thing I always talk about. This is a resonance elevator. Oh! Head voice is head voice because it resonates in the head. Chest voice is chest voice because it resonates down here. If you want to be in your mask, nasality, or whatever, you're pushing up through here. <laughs> anyway, uh, again, if I hold on and I really open up that valve, meaning I'm opening this mouth and this throat back up, I can try to get more chest resonance. Oh, oh, oh. Now, we're going to talk about compression. We're going to talk about vocal compression, and we're going to go through some exercises for that. Vocal compression does not always happen 
in just one place or, you know, whatever you're thinking about. So if you, the reason I prefaced a lot of this video with, uh, you know, try to protect your voice, try to figure out what you're doing, try to pay attention to your vocal health, et cetera, is because the, if you start taking somebody that doesn't know that much about singing, talking about compression and holding the breath and compression, people are just like, yeah, I'm going to fucking go like this. And they're practically shitting their pants trying to learn how to sing higher or whatever. And it's like, you should probably learn some things before that. Anyway, we talk about compression. Compression is pretty much going to happen first by holding the breath back from down here, meaning your vocal cords are clamping up. Uh, however, you don't have to go that hard. If I go, ha, 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 that would be a form of compression. Now, if we can do that together, we'll do one note at a time, breathing from the diaphragm. We're pushing up against those vocal cords, and then we're stopping. Ha, ha. Like I said, you can tell I'm not going ha, and being too crazy. We're going to get to that. But if we go down here for, for the males, if I go, ha, 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 if you're a female, you can follow along just being an octave higher. Ha, ha, you can do this in head voice too. You can hear the glottal stop, the ha, uh, and then we just let go and we release. See if you can tell some of your favorite singers, if you can hear them coming off of compression at the end of a phrase, sometimes if they're being heavy, you'll hear them, yeah, and you'll hear this, that's because they were compressing into the sound, and then they're releasing. It's like a release, a pressure valve, and then they're releasing. So, let's do it in a scale, but I want you to try to take and think about that, it's going to feel like if you have a spring pushing back up against, uh, like this, like diaphragmatic, we're then taking and building that spring like this, and we're, we're building it down, right? Because we're compressing up here, so we're, we're building that kind of pressure, and then we're having pressure built up in here too. So if I take this, I compress, then I'm going to open back up so I can compress through that sound. It's going to sound like this. I'll just do it with one note so you can hear what I sound like. I'm going to go, huh, uh, and then you can tell again, right? So I want you to do that with each one of these. We're just going to do a three-tone scale like this. But I'm going to get that compression first. Remember that we're still trying to drive and push from down here. I'm not just going like this. Even if you're getting distortion, for fuck's sake, if you're getting distortion from down here because you're like, yeah, like... Calm down there, Beavis. You need to fucking bring it back for a second. We're just learning how to compress a little bit. A couple more. Burbs, sorry. <laughs> Diaphragmatic breathing sometimes does that to you. Uh, this should not hurt. This should not be too harsh on the voice or anything. We're just learning how to control that breath. And let me answer one more question. You're not always learning how to sing with compression. If you watch some other fucking person online and they're talking about holding breath, breath back and controlling airflow and stuff, you learn how to control airflow. You don't always sing like you're going to shit your pants. That's ridiculous. So, that's a little bit on compression, right? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sprinkle this in. So, compression is happening here first. If you're getting into distortion or things like that, we can compress in other areas. If you know Metallica and later Metallica, you'll know that he had a yeah, yeah kind of sound, right? If I compress here first and then I start focusing in on an E vowel and thinking about eh, eh, and this kind of snake face thing. <laughs> I can compress essentially in two different areas. So think about your musculature like this. We have the vocal cords here kind of holding the breath back. Then if we go a little bit above those, we'll have these false cords above. Ha, uh, those, those are there to help you not choke and die, but we can rattle those and learn how to rattle them. It's close to the vocal cords, sometimes heats up and doesn't feel very good. It's not something I'm using all the time, but we're going to go back up then to the soft palate. So if I go, ha, uh, and then I go, ha, uh, 
right there. I'm compressing in two different places at the same time. <laughs> so if you want to try that with me, it's the eval projected towards the nose, and we're just trying to find that down here, right? So if I go, does that make sense? So already, we're, we're kind of learning how to take these muscles and kind of make them smaller in a sense, which is what we're going to have to kind of do as we go above this bridge. Instead of everything going this way, huh, and then everything gets louder and bigger and, and wider, we can't do that. We have to learn how to quiet, basically dampen things down or control them. So instead of like, uh, if you feel like you're hearing people and it just becomes this uncontrollable, fuck yeah, we're learning how to control things. So... Now, the more confusing part of this, but the better and the more healthy, is to learn how to compress up in the soft palate region. Ah, ah, ah. So if you become nasal, pharyngeal. Ah, ah, ah. I'm going to try to compress up there by making an ah sound. You can first start off with UNG. Ah, like a... Well, you got it. So then take that UNG and where the placement is that you feel, oh, right where the uvula hangs down, try to turn it into more of an ah. So you're thinking about that space and then you're kind of widening that space right in the back. Oh, and now I'm starting to get a little bit of distortion, but also kind of a version of compression that's happening up near the soft palate. If I do this again, we'll do it in thirds. If I go, ha, ah, I'm really trying to get out of my throat and really be perceptive of ah, if you have to make this awful face I'm making, it might help. You don't always have to make the face. I'm just trying to help. It actually becomes easier the closer you get to your bridge because your bridge if you start thinking about your actual physical, your bridge being a physical thing, like your soft palate, your hard palate, that's where typically this pressure is building up against when your larynx rises and you go, ah, like that. It's because pressure built in here, usually up against the hard palate, and then your voice couldn't acclimate and hold on to that pressure, and your voice started flipping. So if I get up here closer to this, even though I know how to mix or whatever, maybe your voice is higher than mine. If I go, ha, ha, and hold breath back first, ha, ha. Now, you can hear me essentially stretching chest voice. It's hard to tell if I've changed over to a head voice or a mixed voice quality, because it just kind of sounds like this weird, kind of distorted, almost a little bit strange type of thing. Now I'm well over my bridge. So does that make some sense? You see how each time I'm going like this? I hope this is making some sense my chair okay so <laughs> um now we're gonna we're gonna focus in and zero in on that pressure down here again now if you if you compress with me here huh oh and we do an oval we're gonna feel that that chamber thing like this that i keep making this circle and we're gonna be pushing up against that hard palate and that soft palate oh and you're gonna be clamping down i want you to be uh, perceptive again of that soft palate and where that happens and I want you to be physically the same as me meaning we're not using the jaw we're not using the neck like nothing like this is happening there I don't have jaw tension kicking in I don't have eh, I don't have any of this weird shit essentially I teach this all the time if you can do this with vocal fry meaning keeping the jaw open like you're going ah and then go the whole way to the top. Ah, let's do it with vocal fry. Ah, everything that I do and teach and sing is coming from that place. Meaning there should be nothing else happening on a physical jaw, face, neck type of thing in the front here uh, that's kicking in and changing the way that I physically am accessing this, this sound. So if I'll start really quick with... Ah, now I'll bring closure into that. Ah, 
Ah! 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 So that's much harder, and I'm starting to bear down and do different things to get there, but none of this changed. So if you feel yourself going uh, and doing this stuff, mm, it's not going to work. Or if you feel this muscle exclusively, this shit right here, it's not supposed to be there. Anyway, so we're thinking about this in here. We're thinking about holding this, this shape in here, getting to know that shape. Again, we're going to compress, and we're going to start off not close to the bridge, but we're going to go with O. So I'm going to go, huh, oh, we're going to be trying to make that sound small. Oh, it should feel like there's almost like a baseball type thing you're trying to hold on to in here. Oh, employing a couple mixed things I'm starting to neutralize my larynx a little bit this is a habit for me maybe it won't be for you but keep trying to hold on to that shape and just keep thinking about that shape because we're trying to learn how to stretch this shit Now, a part of this, the distortion is kicking in. I kind of don't, I'm not trying to do that. It's a part of these bases being compressed and things kind of clamping down. But right now I'm over my bridge. Are you still following me? If you can do this healthy, then you should kind of be able to keep kind of moving and, and allowing it up. But once again, we're talking about stretching chest voice. So see how high we can take this before we are just getting physically tired. This can be a physically taxing thing. Once again, not on the vocal cords as much themselves, but it's just physically difficult to do. That's about all I got. Now you already hear me starting to pull in a little bit more sound over that palate. Ah! Oh, oh, oh! You can hear the difference, right? So that's starting to creep in, which means I'm starting to lo I can't really bring any more of that chest resonance in without allowing it to balance itself. But either way, I'm stretching that chest resonance and pulling it up to right about that mother dancing. Mother! Tell your children not to walk my way! <laughs> So uh, if you want to go about this a little bit more of a gentle way, again, I always preach uh, slides and uh, or sirens. Oh, 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 there's a nice version of it. You can do it in octaves, you can do it on fifths. Oh, but really holding on to that O shape. Let me throw in a couple more uh, things to think about with this. Because people want to know then, okay, I can make that ridiculous sound you're making. How the fuck do I sing like that? Well, first of all, we have to run through our vowels because vowels are going to mess with things and consonants and the way that you say words. So when I sing a O vowel, it's very big and chesty. As I move up and I allow my voice to be up here, it's going to become more hooty, hoo 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 But if I'm not doing that, then I want everything to be big and broad from down here, like that O shape. So we're trying to almost fit those vowels, other vowels, even E, into that big open shape. E in and of itself, in and of itself, wants you to go horizontal and small. E like this, and that sucks. So we're going to have to vowel modify to make it bigger. It would be like this. This is the same B4 again. E I changed it into basically an A. I went through a Y, E, A, and I opened it vertically. Everything happens vertically. If I do an U, U makes me want to do the same thing. So I'm going to open that up to an O. U, You see how everything is just me physically having to open up and acclimate for that pressure? I, I, uh, are there other vowels? There's A, whatever. Um, I hope this makes some sense. Uh, try to practice this lightly. Don't go for volume. Don't go for volume. Um, you're actually dampening and clamping down on these things. That doesn't mean you should be quiet. You should see I'm, I'm about at speaking voice or a little bit louder. But if you're always going for volume, you're going to be blowing your voice out. It's not necessary. That's what this thing is for. So I'm going to go over to Patreon. I'm going to try to continue this lesson and talk about some songs. All right, I, I appreciate you joining me. If you have questions, um, 
you know, try to a- try to ask them where you can reach out to me. If you want to do a lesson with me, sterlingrjackson.com. You can book lessons right through the website. I appreciate you joining me. I'll be seeing you soon.